Hi there, welcome to Unit 5 Sequences and Series. This video tutorial is going to deal with discrete functions. This is just an introduction to this unit where we are going to be investigating sequences and series. In this video, we're going to start by identifying patterns in sequences, and we're going to predict the value of a, of a term later on in a sequence using these patterns. All right, so first of all, what is a sequence? A sequence is just an ordered list of numbers that has some sort of pattern or rule. You've seen these um, in your studies of math before. You can see this guy goes up by three each time. Uh, this guy goes up by some factor each time. It appears to be two. You can multiply by two each time. Those are both patterns that make these sequences. So our goal in this video is to work with, uh, we're, we're trying to connect the, the, the concept of a sequence to the concept of a function. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with two examples here. Uh, both of which use something called explicit formula notation. So an explicit formula is just a formula that represents any term in a sequence relative to the term number. Okay, so you can't have half terms or fractional terms. So we say our terms, our n values, these are going to be elements of the natural numbers, which are 0, 1, 2. Notice you don't have negative terms. So natural numbers is what we're working, for, working with as opposed to real numbers. All right, so what I've done is I've given you an explicit formula. What this says is any term in a sequence, so I could generate one of these sequences using this function. Any term in the sequence can be, can be written using this formula, two times n squared minus three. So my goal is to write the first four terms of the sequence using this formula. So this is really a function. I can input an n value, get out a tn value. And I'm gonna do that for the first four terms. I'm gonna substitute in one for n, if I do that, you can see that I get negative one. That tells me that negative one is the first term in my sequence. Okay, likewise with two, three, and four. I'm not gonna go over the calculations in detail, but you can see that I've generated a nice sequence. I can conclude that my sequence is negative one, five, 15, 29. So the pattern here is that I take the term number, so one, two, three, four, I substitute it in and square it, multiply by two, subtract by three, and I spit out this nice little sequence. Okay, so right away you can see how this connects to our studies of functions, input-output mechanism. I substitute in the term number, I get out the term value. Okay, another example here, another, any term can be written as n minus two divided by n, where n is the term number. I substitute in one, two, three, and four, and you can see using my, my function uh, idea here that I substitute in the term number, I get out the term value, and I generate a nice little sequence here. Okay, so that's the connection between sequences and functions. I want to work with an example here um, that, you know, I'm giving you the sequence and I'm asking you to come up with the explicit formula. So this is the, the opposite of what we just did. I gave you a formula and I asked you to come up with the sequence. We're going to do the opposite. I've given you a sequence. We're going to come up with a formula. So in order to do that, we kind of have to analyze the sequence. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to analyze this in terms of looking at the, the number of each term and we're going to compare it to the value of each term. And our goal is to find a relationship between those two. So I want to compare the input to the output. So the input in this case, these are my term values, sorry, my, my term numbers, one, two, three, and four, the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. That's what the n value represents. The tn represents the value once I've substituted in the term number. Think of the numbers as the positions in the sequence. So once I substitute those in, you see I get my tn values. My goal is to come up with an equation that models this relationship. So if you're keen, you're thinking, well, you know what? I can see that this goes up by five each time. We have first differences that are five. And what do you know about first differences that are constant? Thinking back to grade nine, you're thinking, well, if first differences are constant, then we have a linear relationship. And in this case, we do have a linear function that has a slope of five. So what we can conclude is that for every every position that I substitute in, I multiply by five and add some value. We're going to determine what that b value is, and that'll give me the value of each term. So in order to determine that b value, we can just treat this as a linear relationship, and we can pick any point that happens to be on this line and substitute it in for n and tn and solve for b. So that's what we're going to do. I just, I'm just going to pick on this first um, n tn pair here. You can just picture this as like a like an ordered pair. This would be n. This is tn. I can substitute those values in and solve for b. Okay, I've solved for b. That's my y-intercept. 
for this linear relation and we can conclude that the explicit formula is tn equals 5 times n plus 2. Okay, so any term in this sequence can be found by substituting the position, multiplying by 5, adding 2. It's very important, remember, that n is an element of the natural numbers. We don't have negative positions or zero, or sorry, or we don't have a zero position in this case. Um, but uh, that's just like kind of a little side note that you want to keep in mind. All right, so another example. Same sort of situation. My goal here is to determine an explicit formula. Uh, but you can see here that my, my sequence is a little bit more complicated. I'm going to perform the same steps. I'm going to, I'm going to try to relate the position of each term to the value of the term. All right, so this one's a little bit more difficult. It's always a good idea to just start by looking at your first differences. Okay, my first differences are not constant, so we can't conclude that this is a linear relation. But if we go a little bit further, you can see that the second differences are in fact constant. And when we have second differences that are constant, you may remember that you can model this relationship using a quadratic relation or a quadratic function, right? We could substitute in the term position into a quadratic function and generate the term value. So that's our goal here. So in order to determine our quadratic function, we need to write our function in this form. Okay, so any value could be written as a some a value times n squared plus b times n plus c. This is your general form of a quadratic function. So I'm hoping this looks familiar. You used to see this as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Uh, we're going to try to fill in the values of a, b, and c here. As it turns out, a, the a value is very easy to calculate. You can just perform this very simple calculation, which is just taking your, your constant second differences and dividing by 2 to get the value 3. In this case, our a value is 3. So I'm going to substitute that into our general quadratic uh, equation here. So you can see that I'm already on my way to solving for uh, a, b, and c. My next, the next uh, step I need, to, I need to perform is something that's going to help me solve for b and c. In the last example, what I did is I picked a point and I substituted it in and I solved for b. I'm going to perform the same step in this in this situation, uh, but I, you can see here that I, I need I need to substitute two different points, and the reason for that is that I've got two unknowns. I've got a b and a c. So what I did is I picked two points. I said I'm going to work with one comma one, and why not just pick two comma ten? I'm going to substitute both of those into my my general expression here that I'm working with. And you can see I, I did that with 1, 1, so tn was 1, n was 1, and I ended up with 1 equals 3 plus b plus c. Solving, uh, just bringing all the, the numerical values over to the other side, I ended up with this expression. And, you know, if you didn't know to, to do this with two values, you'd try it with one and you'd say, oh, shucks, I'm stuck, I've got two unknowns. And then what you'd do is you'd think, well, if I do this again with another point, which is what I did over here, I, I, I'm, I'm still stuck, right? So you've still got two unknowns. Thinking back to previous math studies, if you have two equations with two knowns, you could perform something that is called, uh, a, sorry, this is called a linear, a linear system of equations. We could use elimination or substitution. You, it, you could really, you could do either here. I'm gonna use elimination in this case. Uh, you can rack these two, two linear equations up and, and your goal is to eliminate one of the variables. Uh, so in this case, it's easy to eliminate c. I'm going to subtract these two equations, and you can see that my two c values are going to cancel out. Uh, I've got negative 2 minus negative 2 to get 0, b minus 2b to get negative b. Solving for b, I get b equals 0. Okay, if this was confusing to you in any way, uh, you can just do a little bit of research on elimination or substitution. Uh, I'll definitely have a video lesson posted that I can link to this video, and you can just kind of take a peek at that and pop back into this one. Uh, but that was elimination here. All right, so we've got our b value. What we're going to do is substitute this b value into either of these expressions to solve for c. Uh, so I've, I've just chosen the equation here on the left. I've substituted b in, uh, 0 in for b here, and my goal is just to get c by itself. That turns out to be quite easy because my 0 just disappears. I've got c equals negative 2. So I've happily solved for a, b, and c. Just substitute those into my, my general quadratic expression. And I can conclude that an explicit formula for this sequence is 3 times n squared minus 2, where n is just a natural number. Remember, it's the position of each term. So the first term would be 1, second would be 10, and so on. 
So I can determine any, any val the value of any position in this sequence just by substituting in n. So for instance, I could, I could find out what the hundredth term is just by substituting 100 in and seeing what I get for tn. All right, so that's the end of the first video tutorial in the sequences and series unit. This was just an introduction to sequences and series. Moving forward, we're gonna look at something called recursive procedures, and uh, then we're gonna start talking about arithmetic and geometric series and or sequences and series. Uh, so I hope you join me for those video, video tutorials coming up. Uh, keep an eye out for them. And as usual, thanks for watching.